siphon out all the dead tissue. It just kind of like cut you lost. It's uh, attempting to attach to the clam hammock. The gray coloration. Oh no, it's that frag rex! <laughs> Alright, we first strange thing is happening. Uh, when everything's going so smoothly, things could just turn just like that. Number one, really sadly, the tiny corsia clam that was up front did not make it. In the end of last video, I showed that I got a little bit of like a pinch mental going on. This morning, that clam was gone and it went really, really fast. The blasto um, usually is all inflated and happy. Today, it's not the case. Thankfully, the other euphilias and stuff all looks good, except. This guy right here. Looks like it's brown jellying. This frog spawn has always been doing decent. Uh, it was going through some turf war with the Jason Fox lepto here. I thought this is interesting because if the issue is from the uh, leptos, wouldn't this portion, the front portion, be uh, brown jellying, not the back portion? Regardless, I don't want that tissue floating around, so what I'm gonna do is actually go in real quick with a, um, a turkey baster and just siphon out all the uh, dying tissue to make sure it does not spread. Oh man. It's like, good, 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 boom, all of a sudden you got hit by this. Okay. So I just killed the flow in the tank uh, so that this dead tissue does not get on everything, anything else and infect them. Assuming this is brown jelly disease, I don't want to mess around. Let me just make sure. I'll take a look. So I just uh, siphoned out all the dead tissue. There's a Bristol star in there, huh? Alright, I think this should be it. Uh, looks like that head is in the middle of uh, splitting. I really hope that it has nothing to do with me fragging the grandis because I have some of those polyp that I uh, fragged off, right? And just kind of chilling in the refrigerator right now, uh, waiting for the new home. Alright, well, I'm gonna wait a couple days and keep you posted on what's going on. At least the uh, SPS seems to be doing well and nothing else seems to be affected at this moment. Uh, knock on wood. And wood. Uh. Alright, um... I see that the brown jelly is extending to the back of the head as well. It does not look good. I mean, at this point, I think I'm just gonna cut my loss and just uh, remove the whole head because you do not want to get these uh, diseased tissue onto other heads, especially since um, this is so close to uh, this little uh, mini colony right here. Uh, you see, oh, here we go. See, it's lifting up a little bit. You see that it's actually one big head. I thought it was like two separate heads, but they're not finished splitting, unfortunately. So I'm really afraid that the tissue is gonna get worse. And the whole thing is just gonna turn brown jelly and start spreading throughout the tank. So let's go ahead and um Oh this sucks because I had this heck for quite a bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and remove this guy. This sucks. Yeah, first thing first, let's go ahead and shut off the flow to the tank first. Because the last thing you want is getting this spread everywhere. And I also want to be really careful when I lift this head out of the water. Because if I if it's too far gone as I lift it out. Uh, the tissue may just kind of slough off and get all over the tank. So ideally, I need both my hands and just kind of scoop it um, under the water. This sucks, dude. One more, one more look. Yeah, the, the top of it, you can see, it's already kind of browned out. It's on the way out. Even though, I think from the front, you can't really tell. It still hold the, has the um, tentacle size. Oh, that, that. I can't even speak, man. In this particular case, if I have to guess, I think it's the lepto that kind of stung the frog spawn of Bolivian. And I uh, just took it out. Here's the head, looks like it is in the process of splitting. That is really unfortunate. Well, I mean, losing any coral is unfortunate. I feel like if I have like a QT system, or if I really want to, I could potentially try to like iodine dip this guy and just try to save this head. But uh, for me, having dealt with like brown jelly disease in the past, usually the best course of action is just kind of like cut your loss, you know? Um, if it's a single head that you can break off easily, break it off and chuck it. The next morning. I think knocking on wood help because the brown jelly disease ended with that one head. And to the best of my ability, I think what probably happened is that the lepto, that's the Jason Fox uh, Jack Lantern lepto, just had it. It was releasing stingers uh, for quite a while, but it was nothing serious until I guess yesterday. I was able to remove it pretty cleanly. And I think all the other euphilias has not been affected, thank God. And things may be connected because um, maybe a week or so ago, uh, we noticed that the uh, small corsia clam started getting a little bit pinch mental. And yesterday morning, uh, it just died. And that's also when the um, that had brown jelly as well. And I also noticed that the blasto, which is usually really happy and really fat, is kind of like shrunken up a little bit. It's not 
to a point where I'm like super concerned, but it's definitely not as inflated. But everything else seems okay. So I wonder if everything is kind of connected. And I was talking to Daniel about it. First of all, he said I'm crazy because the Grande's Pally has a pretty high dose of palytoxin, which yes, he is absolutely true. I need to be way more careful. And secondly, he thought that maybe things are kind of related because the clam does filter the water, uh, the tank water. So these kind of like these stabilizing and bacteria infection events probably kind of just push it over the edge, which. Ah oh, man. Honestly, I'm done with uh, baby Corsia, baby Maxima clams. I just have no luck with them and I would hate to kill any more. What I do have luck with seems to be the uh, smaller Derisa clam and I guess the Squamosa as well. They're supposed to be pretty hardy and later on maybe the Geka. They're supposed to be easiest clam. Just harder to get nowadays. Uh, for Maxima, this one still seems to be okay. But of course, this is like a larger size one. And now that it has been in the tank for about two weeks now, I'm going to go ahead and start moving it to higher up in the rock where it's, where it's where it should belong. As you can tell, it's uh, feeding time. That's how all the fish kind of like line up right in front of the Avos uh, feeding tube right here. All right, well, today's mission is to continue working on the aquascape tank. Later on this week, uh, those floating work is gonna arrive. So for now, I want to uh, make sure the rock looks how I want them to look because later on I'll be busy with something else. This week I want to really address the Gorgonians. As you guys uh, may have remembered, like when the tank first got set up, I added Gorgonian because they're kind of like a quick way to get the SPS look. You got that vertical growth formation, which I really, really like. And on top of that, you get that really cool wave motion as well. But this one in particular has grown to a pretty large size. Um, it's normally that's not a big problem, except in this particular case, it is kind of brushing up against some of the zoas, causing them to close up. And also they are, uh, they are blocking flow and blocking light. All right, with my awesome long yellow gloves, I'm going in. All right, let's get the easy one out of the way first. I think there's just a case of uh, pulling it away from the rock work. Yep, really, really loose. And that's it. And this guy just put in the back for now. Okay, now this is the tricky one. Let's see here. Oh, isn't there good? Oh man, okay. So I got, so I got some loose skin over here that I probably wanna scrape off because it's gonna regrow. But here's this chunk. Look at this chunky guy. All right, if you're local in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, hit me up. Um, definitely got some of these guys that has been really popular locally and it's really fluffy and beautiful. Just drop that here for now. All right, I'm gonna see if I can go in with a tweezer, just kind of clean it up a little bit. It's not a huge deal. If it grows back, it'll be pretty easy to plug out, but let's just avoid it if at all possible. Shoo! All right. Clean. One eternity later. All right, I'm not super proud of the uh, mounting decision I've done, but it will do for now. Let me show you guys. So I just finished mounting these guys. You'll notice that the SPS rock is pretty crowded. Uh, typically, I probably want to leave a lot more space between different frags because if they do well and start growing, they can run into each other and I'll be, I'll be fragging it a lot. But because I don't have all these out of real estate yet, I figure let me just kind of mount them under the light and later on, um, if I have to move them, I could because they are on frag plug and it'll take them a couple months at least to kind of grow out and, um, and establish and start growing. So I think I should have a little bit of time. And we also got that hot pink. Posipora, Posipora, I can't pronounce it. It's a little bit too close to the anemone for my taste, but that is kind of one where I wanted to start growing. And I feel like it's gonna grow pretty fast if the condition is right. So I wanted to start off at a pretty low area and fill upwards, but we'll see. If the anemone moves a little bit closer, I probably need to move that frag. And you see that I started off the, uh, 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 Force Fire Digitata right there. I kind of wanted to keep it kind of close to the other frag that I have that is growing really well. So I figured that flow and that light um, is probably optimal for this kind of Manipora. So I figured I'll just plant it around the same level. And it is also kind of close to that Monty as well, the Kung Pao Monty. Uh, so hopefully they'll play well together, but if not, it's all good, easy to remove at this point. Uh, I ended up keeping the clam right here because the clam would not fit in that slot. I tried to clam there first, but that slot is just too small for the uh, the clam. So I figured I'll just, right, I'll just keep it here for now and we'll figure something out. For that spot, 
I actually have the Magnificent uh, SPS frag right there, and I really like that spot. It is a little close to the Miyagi Torts to its right and the Oregon Torts to its left, but again, I'm running out of real estate. Figure I just start it there first. So we'll start it there first, and later on, like depending on which coral seems to do well there, I'll remove the other ones and place them somewhere else. So for now, we'll just kind of test it out, see what works there. Over here, I moved the uh, pink tip green uh, torch onto the rock itself. I'm not sure if the flow is a little bit too rough over there for this guy, but uh, based on what I see on Instagram and YouTube, it seems like it should be okay. Uh, but I'm kind of just like gonna try it there for maybe a day or two to see how the torch react. If it seems stressed, I'm gonna turn down the flow and move that uh, frag right there. But this guy, it's okay here. Uh, this guy, I'm keeping an eye out because it kind of protrude a little bit more into the flow compared to the go tour. This pretty much sums up where the uh, where I place all the frags and stuff like that. Uh, later this week, the floating rockscape is gonna arrive and I, that's when I'm gonna move the rest of the SPS uh, and potentially some of the existing one onto the floating rockscape. I actually have a scape right there and an eyepiece right there. It's gonna look nice. All right, so I guess I'm gonna insert the SpongeBob time travel uh, card right here and we're gonna fast forward to when the uh, rock work arrived. You get the idea. Ho ho, look at these guys. So last week, Bulk Proof Supplies and the social media influencer ran a special where if I used one of the code to get 20% off, so I went ahead and bought one of these uh, 200 gallon per day uh, unit with the water safer kits. Normally this is like 370 ish dollar, which is quite a bit. But with the 20% off, I was able to get it down to about 320 or so. Math may not be exact, but basically I got 20% off. So I'm looking forward to hooking this guy up and uh, start making some beautiful pure water again because once again, we are keepers of water as much as we are keeper of reef. Anyways, our DI unit is uh, not too exciting, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Uh, today, one interesting thing I noticed is that the Theresa clam actually let go of that little piece of carbon that it has been holding on to for the longest time. I'm sure most of you guys know already, but the Maxima and Crocea clam, um, they produce some kind of threat, right? To kind of like uh, attach themselves to rock. Theresa's, when they're young, they do that as well, but as they get a little bit older, they actually rely on their weights to hold them in place. And they like to sit on the substrate. This guy is a character because like, uh, ever since I got him, he had been holding on to a tiny, uh, piece of carbon and it looks like it finally released it for whatever reason. Now instead of just letting him sitting right directly on the substrate where other things could potentially get into his foot, not that I'm expecting anything but just to be safe. Also for the fact that I actually have this guy right here that I've been chilling on my shelf, I figure okay well I mean now it's the perfect time to use it. It's the clam hammock from Brightwell Aquatics. I bought this from Bulk Reef Supply, but unfortunately, as you can see, one of them cracked during shipping. Uh, if it's Amazon and stuff like that, I'll probably just easily get exchanged with Bulk Reef Supplies. I, I'm not sure what the process is, so I just kind of like, like, whatever. Uh, four out of five ain't bad. I'm gonna go ahead and slide one of these guys under the wrist clamps. Whether you actually need it for the wrist clam, probably not, but because I do have this around, I figure, eh, why not? All right, so once again, I'm gonna use my trusty blue grabber. Um, I'm gonna use this opportunity to test out a different spot for the uh, turquoise or green gani because did not seem to be too happy over there. Oh, probably should have rinsed this guy. It's interesting because you can see the bottom's already kind of secreting stuff, trying to attach the things. So let me see if this Teresa's actually like this little clam hammock here. Two days later. Here we can see the Dorissa clam actually release some of these uh, threats and also use the foot to kind of like maneuver itself. You see at the bottom right here, it's uh, attempting to attach to the clam hammock. So that's kind of cool, but at the same time I feel like it's trying to move. So I may kind of shovel the hammock over a little bit to see if it likes, it likes to flow a little better. It looks like it's trying to turn itself a little bit um, counterclockwise. So we're gonna help it a little bit to see if you can uh, be a little bit more comfortable in this flow, but uh, it's kind of cool. It's cool to see. All right guys, I got some interesting product to show you guys. This is from uh, Reef Rex. This is not sponsored. Uh, I've talked to him for quite a while. I've seen his product at like trade shows and stuff like that, but it never really, I guess, screamed out to me because I always thought, okay, I like to use a uh, regular rock. Why would I turn to these? But uh, during my search for floating rockscape in a bag, or just kind of like a uh, more natural looking frag rack, I once again came across uh, Reef Rex work. 
work. So this time around, I'll spend a little bit more time to take a look and see what they have to offer. It seems to fit what I am looking for, which is a really natural looking shelf rock where I can put frags on to grow SPS off of long term, not just like a temporary uh, frag rack like these guys right here. And the other requirement is that the uh, magnet they use on the other side has to be able to go into the tank. Now this looks like a regular magnet, but it's actually coated, so it is safe to use in tank, at least according to them when I asked them. These are the gray coloration one. They have like gray, brown, and purple. And for me, uh, in terms of my tank, I, I like I like the gray look. It looks a little bit more neutral. And eventually, Carolina LG is gonna overgrow them anyways. We've got a corner unit, medium, and I got a shelf unit, also medium. And of course, we got the uh, magnet. Let me just put it here because I'm afraid it's gonna pinch my hand on something. These are rated for up to half inch glass, which is what I have there. Now the only sketchy thing is that I also have acrylic panel, black panel in the back, so that make the thickness a little bit more, but hopefully they'll be okay. Uh, so we'll test it out. And because I was having issue trying to get a sense of what color this actually is, to figure I'll just do a quick look of how it looks like under white light. So this is the gray coloration. Anyways, this is uh, again not sponsored. I bought them straight up. I talked to the owner for a little bit to make sure this is okay to use in the uh, in the reef tank. And these are not cheap by any means. I think it's like about sixty-five or sixty-nine dollars each. So these are not cheap. Ah! Uh oh. <laughs> you didn't... No, they're five dollars. Five five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but because it's gonna be like a permanent fixture in the tank, I figured okay, we'll spend a little bit more, make it look a little bit more natural versus um, like a regular frack frack or just epoxy rock and wrist them falling over and whatnot. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, so I cook curry. Where? <laughs> Is it, I it, it, we, cook, we, cook, we cook curry. So we're gonna go eat now. Cool? Five dollars. Sixty what? Sixty no, five, five bucks. You made it. Life of an artist is complicated. There's huh? no straight answer. No, he's I got two faking. pieces of rock. I can, I can one, is, one is a corner one, one is like a flat round one like I'm showing back there, right? Um, I'm trying to see which one goes where. I'm thinking I might swap it. Maybe I'll make that shelf rock. Maybe I'll make that shelf rock over there instead and just make this protruding piece right behind this little. Because these two are both angular, a little bit angle. I think they kind of call to each other. I'm gonna go ahead and move that shelf rock to the right side and use this on the left side instead. Um, I don't agree. <laughs> Doesn't matter because I'm an artist. You're not. You're a politician. That's why. You're a politician. That's why you're not. I'm an artist. I think this one is more stand out. Yeah. It should be longs to here. Like in back there. Yeah. So all those heavy stuffs, like, like all here, and that one is more like. A you think flatter, you think that's more subtle. Yeah, a smaller piece. Let me translate that to artist talk, okay? If I want to pitch no. this idea. So I'm trying to convince myself. No. Her argument... You don't need to convince yourself, just do it. Her argument is that by having that more subtle piece in the back with this thing just out, you put more dramatic emphasis on this dragon head. It's more dramatic on this side. Versus like if you, you put this dramatic. piece over there as well. You yourself is dramatic. with each other. Versus now we got an accent right there and then we got an accent on this here, which is both these kind of like angular pieces. Um, could work. Here? Or Lower, here? yep. Lower. Okay. Actually, yep, looks good. Right here, don't move. Right here? It's not sticking. <laughs> what are you yeah. doing? Oh, sh**. You drop it? <laughs> This is problem solving, okay? What do I have that's metal that I can stick in there? Your dog! Your dog! I think this may work. Yeah! You don't need that's to right, solve kids. problems if you don't create one. Street smart! <laughs> Street smart! Street Come smart! Uh, Street smart! And right. then you drop it again. Oh! Uh, Are you kidding? What's this? Huh? <laughs> Bang? Yeah. Bang? What the heck? Huh? I'm just fishing around in the... Uh... What is this? I have no idea what this is. It's magnetic. Is it? Hey? Oh, hey? Hey, teacher? Let me go, teacher! No! Yo, seriously, what the hell, man? This is turning out to be a... Uh, I didn't even know it was fine. <laughs> this is funny. 
Oh no, it's that Frag Rex! Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh, that's not good. That is not good. Those are some expensive stuff on there. I, I will really good. enjoy this video. Make sure that Jeez. you cut this. <laughs> Alright, now we work smarter, not harder. I got a little stepping stool. We'll see. I got a little stepping Wait. stool. Wait! I got a little stepping so. stool. So? So I can actually see where I'm going now. So your height is a problem, is that what you're saying? Height is a problem. <laughs> yeah, good. Right, so That's it. One Magnus is inside and I can actually fit one outside. It was perfect. <sighs> that was quite an adventure. Hopefully the frag's okay. Uh, knocked over a whole frag rack. That was really unfortunate. Alright, thanks mom. Thanks for your uh, quote unquote words of encouragement. That drove me to keep going to prove <laughs> you wrong. Alright, it's gonna be awkward doing this by myself, uh, but I got the palm meter back from Reef Sensei Telegram. I'm just gonna read that out because this is impossible. Um, so this right here is only about 120. I thought it'd be higher. Uh, let's see, the rock work is sitting at about 180. Right here is two. 219, 200, 200 right here, right here it's 180, it's interesting, the fact that it's actually more light here than compared to here, uh, and the other one I'm really interested in, this rock right here, looks like it's 140, 140, so like the back wall I was expecting a little bit higher, but again as we know that um, I'm gonna add the light bar there so it should be okay, Let's check here, it looks like we get, wow, we're getting about 180, yeah, it's like 180 right here. About 150, uh, two-thirds of the way down on the Zoa Gardens, quite high, 150. Down on the sand bed, we're hitting about 100, so that's perfect. And to the left side, the dimmer portion of the tank, we're getting about 85-ish. And the A can is getting about 90. I'm curious what the frog spine is getting back there too, it's about 70. That is fine. This frog spine is getting about 110, which is fine too. The gold torch is getting 140-ish and is loving life. The green torch is getting 190. Wow, it's a pretty big jump. And how about back here where I had the Coros 80. All right, so it looks like the rock here getting 200. Back here is getting about 150, 150-ish. Definitely need to bump it up. So I think we can pretty safely add the LED light bar in the back to kind of boost the power value of the back of the tank. And um, I am still slowly cranking up these lights. I think overall, the power value of the tank besides this portion is pretty high. Uh, the rest is kind of lower than expected. Now the trick is how do I slowly dial this up without burning these corals. I guess uh, slow and steady is the way to go. And of course adding the uh, light bar in the back just to give these SPS their own specific light, especially the one that's on the wall should help. Yeah, mom. Okay.